was flushed. All right, Doug, thank you so much. So as we mentioned, big story from the weekend. We're still dealing with it. That cyber attack that crippled North America's biggest petroleum pipeline. We're talking about the Colonial Pipeline. Doug talking about uh, the stock impact. Uh, it's a critical source of supply for the New York region. The FBI, Tim, already attributing the massive breach to ransomware created by a relatively new gang. It's called uh, Dark Side. Yeah, uh, let's go right now to Andre Krell, founder and chief executive officer of LIFARS. The New York City Lab was established in collaboration with the FBI, DHS, and Secret Service to examine digital evidence of all forms of cybercrime. Andre joins us right now on the phone from New York City. Andre, thanks so much for, for joining us on this. When you see something like this happen, what is your first thought? Uh, Tim and Carol, thank you really for having me. My first thought is, look, we handle these 300 incidents like this every year. The cyber patients coming to my door on a daily basis. I feel like a cyber emergency doctor and a therapy. So for me, that's a normal day, right, to have like a 10, 16 victims calling and asking for help. Uh, what's different maybe right now is, is the press around and magnificence of the colonial. It's like a 45%, I guess, of our East Coast supply. And also give the understanding that even such a big entity can be compromised and the uh, industrial control system, what we call industrial control system, the pipeline can be affected. Do you think the Colonial Pipeline is making a mistake by not asking for cyber support, support excuse me, from the U.S. federal government? Is that a mistake, or is it better for Colonial to remediate on its own? Uh, Carol, I do think they do. Uh, they're part of a, something called industrial control system joint working group mm -hmm. that's established at the DHS level. I do believe uh, that they are part of this working uh, joint group, and DHS holds at the John Felker era, uh, the World Assistant Director of Agency, which we had a personal relationship with. They hold many of these exercises with uh, the system. You have to think of these threat after like a cyber sniper. It's not like someone is making mistakes. Like, whose mistake is that some of us gets called tomorrow? Like, should we praise someone for bringing the call to society or any kind of like a virus to society? I don't think there's really like a point of finger to say who is really guilty. Look, these threat actors who are making 30, 40 million a year, wow. they have some level of sophistication. Uh, for example, there's a speculation on the market right now that Colonial was targeted because of uh, high ability to pay through their insurance program. Understanding is that, you know, such threat actors looking for 30 to 40 million, apparently Colonial holds such money to pay to on some insurance program. So I'm not sure if that's true or not, but there's a speculation that threat after should pick them because they are able to pay. What needs to happen to get to a point where where this just doesn't happen anymore, where this can be prevented? It, it's look like, like, let's face the reality. Uh, being a compromise, like for me, I tell you, being a cyber doctor, it's just one of the life certainties, right? There is, there is no way to prevent cyber sickness, per se, in my opinion. Like, we're all going to get something, right? And the question is, it's going to be mild call to big cyber cancer. And is this something we can't answer? But what we can answer to prepare for it, like take all the vitamins, uh, you know, do a more holistic approach in cybersecurity, do more holistic approach in how we can try to detect, uh, remediate these threat actors, how we actually detect them, and how quickly can we really deal with them, that we detect them, and isolate those systems that have been compromised. Most of the networks... For example, what happened to Colonial, it's, these threat actors are going to come to your network. It's just a reality. Now, the real question is, can you isolate them very quickly? Can you eradicate the threat? Can you disconnect and, and prevent lateral movement from more damage? And we've seen in society in a pandemic how we fail. Why do you think the enterprise system don't fail? They fail the same way as the whole society fell to pandemic. It's just the nature we, we as a... Um, I would say computer architects never had to deal with this isolation like a zero trust issue. Mm -hmm. Like how do they really operate like, when I can't trust you that you scare on team on the phone, I never met you. How do I know it's really you and I know it's really Google radio? What is this radio going to somewhere else? Andre, just got about fifty seconds left here, so I'm what are your you say you get calls every day, so is this just kind of part of our norm going forward? Carol, for me, it's been for the last 15 years, so yeah. uh, I can tell I've been running the cyber emergency room. This is a business what they do as a lifer. This is a digital forensic internal response. We also have a offensive team that's basically breaking this for clients uh, right. uh, being paid. And we do this like every day. This is what we're actually living in. So
So is, is it about, just quickly, we've only got about 30, 40 seconds, is it about doing harm or is it just about finding entities that can pay the ransom money? And just quickly, if you could. It's truly just getting paid. These criminals just want to get paid. That's all what they want. And it's easy. Two, three days, four days, holding ransom, get paid in the bitcoins, disappear. And thanks to momentum, what happened with the bitcoin going up, mm -hmm. some of them acknowledge uh, Mr. Tesla and, and congratulate him that for bitcoin going up. Well, good to check in with you. I'm sure you're busy, uh, as you mentioned at the top. So, Andre, thank you for your time again. Andre Krell, he's founder and CEO of the Cybersecurity Solutions and Services Company, LIFARS. He has done a lot of contract work for the Department of Justice and the Special Cyber Operations at the U.S. Air Force, uh, joining us on the phone in New York City. But a way of life? Is the organization that has been connected to this pointed out in a, in a statement on the dark web earlier? Uh, they don't want to necessarily cause harm. They're business people. Right. It's a transaction. But it's hard to do this without <laughs> causing harm. Yeah, exactly. Uh, because this pipeline has been down. Exactly. All right. You're listening to Bloomberg.